Okay, so we start by dropping the base STL into my favourite slicing program called Simplify 3D. As you can see, it gives you a very nice 3D rendering that you can look around. You can zoom in and position it where you like. One of the good things about Simplify 3D is you can actually manually put supports where you like. Other 3D slicing software doesn't allow you to do that. But what I've done here is I've allowed it to put it where it thinks it needs to go. Now I've clicked on the process and we're now looking at the various settings that I've decided to print the base in. I'm going to use PLA plastic with a 2 micron layer height, a 100% infill. The support I'm going to change to 10% so it's easy to break away. The temperature I like to use is 200 for PLA and I set the heated build plate to 80 because really on this particular machine 80 is really 50. The other settings are fine. So what we've done now we've uh, hit the prepare to print as you can see it's actually showing you what you're going to get with all the support again you can look around it in three dimensions you can check to see if it has sliced it correctly although in this instance I didn't bother because I knew that it had and then you've got two options you can either save to a USB stick uh, SD card sorry rather or you can print direct by USB I choose um, USB because it gives you a real-time rendering of the actual print process there you go and I figured that you'd like to see the computer version of it printing as well as the machine actually printing the physical object this video has been sped up about 1500 percent so a two-hour print process will fit in a measly 10 minutes For those of you wondering why I chose a 100% infill ratio is that it's such a small item and small parts printed on these particular type of 3D printers don't lend well to each other. It's far more difficult to print a small object than it is to print a larger object. I chose PLA for this particular project because the motor won't be subjected to extreme temperatures. PLA is a good easy to use plastic but it does have dis disadvantages. It tends to warp and soften at relatively mid-range temperatures say around 60 to 100 degrees centigrade whereby ABS would withstand that temperature but it's a little bit more difficult to work with and it was unnecessary for this project. The printer I've decided to use is a CTC MakerBot Replicator 1 clone. It's actually a very good printer given the price. It's actually one of the cheaper printers that I've managed to purchase. Others that I've got do pretty much the same job, look pretty much the same, but they did cost about four to five times more expensive than this one. Because of its open en enclosure, this CTC printer is used exclusively for PLA plastic. Here we are, I've zoomed up a little bit now to give you a better view. Photographing these sort of things 
isn't very easy I've found. The masking tape on the build platform isn't any ordinary masking tape. It's a special 3D printing uh, masking tape, which is a very high temperature acrylic type of uh, masking tape. And the reason why we, we put the masking tape on is because the PLA plastic really does stick well to this tape. And it's a, it's a sacrificial um, tape whereby I don't mind having to rip it off and apply more because it's cheap. Other tapes, some of the more exotic types, uh, for instance Kapton tape, it's difficult to apply expensive and to be honest I, I don't use that anymore. You can see the uh, support structures being built in the middle of the model. I decided to use support because over 45 degree angle the plastic can actually drop down and the supports are there to hold up the arch. I may have been able to print it without support but I wanted to be able to do this in a one time. Certainly not because of the price of the plastic more on the, the time it takes to print. If it had got this far and then the, uh, the arch cave in, it would have been a waste of two and a half hours. I chose white plastic because Laser Sabre did and I'd already got white loaded in the machine and I think I've already told you in my other videos I'm one of the most incredibly laziest people you'll ever meet and it really was too much trouble for me to change it. Now I'm no real expert, I mean I've only made two of these motors before and Laser Sabre kind of gave me the idea that this might be an easy motor to build, easier to wind bobbins and such, but so far my feeling is it's going to be really difficult to make simply because it's so small. A 
And there you have it. The first stage of the print process. The base. Check out the other video that I'm going to make when I print out the bobbins. Thanks for watching.